Hello YouTube, this is Frankie. I am putting together a little video to show you how to replace a hard drive in a Canon HG10 video camera. Now this is a high definition camera. All of my high def pictures, this is what I use. I love this camera. Um, it takes excellent video. Uh, it takes it at 1080p and um, I just love this video. All of my high definition videos that I've uploaded to YouTube have all been with this camera. Now I'm not a professional videographer by any stretch of the imagination but I just, you know, I bought this a couple of, a few years back and um, I've used it for everything and I really love it. It's small, it fits in the palm of my hand. Um, it originally comes with a 40 gigabyte hard drive it's a uh, spinning hard drive. It's not a solid state or anything like that. Um, and as anybody knows with a spinning hard drive, eventually they fail. Uh, this one, in fact, did fail while I was in the process of taking some RC videos. Uh, fortunately, I back all of my videos up to my computer hard drive uh, for editing purposes and whatnot. So uh, the only video that I actually lost off of the hard drive was <clears throat> the video that I was currently shooting which was unfortunate because it was pretty some pretty good video but anyways uh, I also researched on YouTube to see if there were anybody uh, if there was anybody else because I kinda wanted to learn how to uh, take apart the um, the camera to get my hard drive out and to replace it the only thing I could find is another guy posted a video uh, on YouTube uh, showing how to do it on a Sony uh, video camera um, it's somewhat different. It did help me out a little bit, but quite honestly, I just had to kind of start pulling screws out from this and, and figure out where to go. Uh, it was I knew where to start though, because you can see here on the um, side, um, this is pretty much where your hard drive is going to be back behind this plate. So I just had to figure out which screws to remove to get the plate off and how to get to the hard drive. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and show you now. There are a couple of things. Basically, the only thing you need are two little, um, two little tools. Uh, a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws and then a little flat head screwdriver to um, help you with removing the uh, flat cable, the zip uh, cable on the hard drive once you get it out. Okay, so obviously first thing you want to do is remove the battery. Okay. And then also we want to uh, loosen up the strap. All right. You will see there's going to be a couple of screws uh, here that are going to be, need to be removed. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And of course, I don't have the right size screwdriver. Let me get a smaller one. There we go. Okay, so you want a small one. <laughs> Compared to the bigger one, you need to make sure you get a small tip screwdriver. That's the Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so let's try this again. Magnetic tip really helps out so that you don't lose the screws. Okay. Now, of course, I just had this thing apart yesterday and already I can't remember if I gotta remove this screw or not so I'm gonna leave it in there for now I do know that you do have to take this screw out and then underneath you have a plate that holds this uh, together so there are three silver actually four silver screws on this plate you need to remove Now it took me a little while to uh, get me another hard drive because I was trying to, um, here's where uh, this little flathead screwdriver will come in handy too. Just pop this plate off right here, okay, and it will show you here. Now underneath here, there's really nothing else you have to do because those three screws that go across, or these two screws that go across here, actually hold this plate down. So under here, we don't have to take off that one, so you don't have to take that off unnecessarily. Just remove the one screw there, the four screws underneath on the plate, okay, 
and then your cover is going to come right off. All right. And you want to be careful because the hard drive is right under there. Okay, and there's your hard drive. Okay. Now, your hard drive is just a little standard 1.8. Um, like I said, stock this uh, for the factory. This came with a Toshiba 40 gig hard drive. Now I've already replaced the hard drive here, but I'm doing this uh, just so um, for the benefit of others. Um, I found a little 30 gig hard drive. Um, in fact, um, my boss at work ended up having like three of these laying around doing nothing that a manufacturer had uh, shipped him by mistake, and he had no use for them. So fortunately, um, I didn't have to uh, buy another hard drive. But you can upgrade these hard drives, so you can get them on eBay. Um, I'll show you here in a minute something that I was trying with. Um, but yeah, you can get, this is a 30 gig hard drive. Uh, it came with a 40 gig hard drive. Um, you can get a 60 gig hard drive, I believe, uh, summer. Some people are doing that with other video cameras. Um, but let me show you here. You've got the rubber insulators um, here. Just flip it over and you'll notice on the bottom side you have your zip cable. Okay, now with your zip cable, you want to be very careful. I'm right-handed, so let me switch this around. Uh, you want to be very careful because you don't want to break this. Okay, so you take your little screwdriver and just pop up your little zip tab. Okay, and then once you unlock it, just pull it out, and there you go. Okay, so now you have your hard drive out. Chunk this. If it's bad, obviously, just chunk this, unless um, there's something else you can do with it. And uh, there you go. That's all there is to it. Um, I'll show you how in a minute to go ahead and put this back on. But I was actually, um, I was actually playing around with an idea. Um, you know, as I mentioned, spinning hard drives, uh, they will eventually fail. And um, you just need to make sure that you, uh, you have a good process of backing up all of your video. Because a 40 gig hard drive um, or whatever size it comes with, you know, that's that's a good, um, you know, three to five hours worth of uh, video um, that is potentially lost if your hard drive decides to fail on you. And it will not give you any warning. It'll just fail on you as mine did. It was working fine one second and we went to take another video and it just failed. I kept getting a hard drive error. That was it. It was done. I couldn't get the data off of it. I couldn't get anything off it. So when they go, they go instantly. Very seldom are you ever going to get any kind of warning. So what I was trying to do is online, uh, you will be able to find solid state hard drives, um, basically a 1.8 solid state hard drive uh, with a ZIF connector on it. Quite honestly, they're very expensive. Um, the cheapest one that I could find was Actually, it was a 35 gig hard drive or 32 gig hard drive, solid state, and on eBay they were they were like 60 bucks. Um, that's not a bad price for a solid state drive. Um, however, it's uh, it's more money. When it's expensive whenever you don't have that much money to invest just in one thing. So I ended up finding this. I wanted to try this out. Uh, it's a little ZIF adapter. It's a 1.8 inch um, uh, compact flash adapter. Uh, and I got a 32 gig uh, high-speed compact flash um, card and I was hoping um, that by using this I would be able to use basically this would be similar to this would be a solid-state hard drive um, well unfortunately it didn't work for me I mean I picked this up on eBay for 30 bucks uh, for the adapter and the card um, possibly from somebody who was trying the same thing and it didn't work so anyways uh, I will show you exactly basically what you would do um, let's go ahead and put it back in here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Gotta make sure you get the cable in there correctly. Okay, now this is a different type of ZIF adapter. This one has the sliding lock on it instead of the uh, flip up lock. Um, but either way, you just want to make sure that your, um, your tabs, let me show you here. I'll pull this back off just so that you can see okay on your cable all right you have the one side where you can see the uh, the cable the connectors the contacts are open and then on the other side you'll see that they're not they're covered by plastic okay so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the contact side always goes down towards facing the board 
okay, because your contacts on these ZIF adap adapters or the ZIF connectors are always going to be down. Okay, so just take it, slide it in there, release your lock first, obviously, slide it in there, and then go ahead and lock it. All right, and so this was the moment of truth for me. You just put it in here um, and then power it up. Go ahead and put on my uh, battery. Okay, and then I'll turn this around so that you can see it. Fire it up. Okay, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it'll come on. Okay, it goes through its little thing. And then you'll notice here the HDD right here. Okay, that is searching. It's trying to detect, detect your hard drive. That's not a good sign. If it's sitting here and it's just running back and forth, uh, it means that it's not detecting your hard drive at all. And then eventually you're going to get this error. It says cannot read the hard drive. So unfortunately my idea uh, for putting in a solid state drive using the compact flash card obviously didn't work. Um, now somebody who's looking at this video may say, well you idiot, it's not going to work because this, this, and this, and that. Uh, technology wise, I don't really know. I, th I was hoping it would work, so I'm not really sure what the difference between a solid state drive would be and a compact flash, maybe it's in the formatting, whatever the case may be, it doesn't work. Um, so basically, you just shut it back off, give it a moment, and remove your hard drive that's not going to work. Okay, so get a hard drive that does work. Now I may still end up buying the actual solid state hard drive if I get some money. Um, that I can use to invest that. I still think long term, I love this camera, I'm gonna, I plan on having it a long time. It takes beautiful video, uh, for me anyways. And um, I, if, if this hard drive fails, you know, uh, my, my next step is going to be to get a solid state. So hopefully by that time, maybe later on down the road. Like I said, I've had this camera for about three years. I've done a lot of video with it. Um, and This particular ZIF adapter is pretty tight in there, although I do have a lockup. Okay, so I got that in there, and you just want to take your screwdriver and lock it down. Well, there you go. Just lock it down. Use your screwdriver, use your finger, whatever works the best. <laughs> All right, and just take it in there and put it like so kind of tuck down your little things. Okay. Now at this point in time, normally you would just want to, before you start buttoning it back together, you would just want to go ahead and turn it on, make sure it works. Actually, I should have removed the battery before plugging that zip in. Shame on me. But I didn't. Alright, so then this has some locking tabs up top just need to get them locked in up top first and then this cover needs to go underneath that tab before you close it alright and then go ahead and lock it down okay now oop. okay this actually has a little slot that that's got to fit down in so I just that's why it wasn't going in. Well, come on. Good. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Okay, and then just basically button it back up the same way you took it off. very simple to replace this I mean 10 minutes you could have the old one out and the new one in um, so it's, it's very easy and that's that's a good thing um, seemed like the Sony one that I saw on YouTube was a little bit more involved wasn't too difficult either but 
it's nice whenever it's easy to get to. So basically you got one, two, three, four, five total screws, pop the, cup off, uh, pop the cover off, and you're all set to go. And I'll show you, go ahead and put our strap back together, I'll show you what it should look like when you power it up. initialization screen is normal and Violi. Now this hard drive I have already initialized because I've already installed this hard drive. What you would get when you first install the hard drive on the screen you will show a red message that says uh, please initialize hard drive. Um, in order to initialize the hard drive hit your function okay and then you're going to go down to your menu button or menu, uh, your settings menu down on the bottom um, and then hit set. Okay. And then the hard drive is the second one down. So scroll down to there. All right. And this is also a telltale sign too. As long as these are white, initialize HDD and HDD usage info. As long as they're white, it means that it has detected the hard drive. Okay, so all you would do is go over, select initialize hard drive, hit set, hit yes. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to initialize? It will erase everything. Just hit yes again. And then it says now initializing, avoid moving the camcorder. Now, I don't mind doing it again because I haven't recorded any video on this um, hard drive yet anyway. so. And then it'll go ahead and it'll basically initialize it, format the hard drive, and then that's it. And then you'll get back to your menu screen. Okay, and then just to check to make sure it's done, you can go to HDD Usage Info, and then it'll tell you how much. I got a 30 gig hard drive, it's showing 29.9 gigabytes, zero usage. So you're good to go. All set. Now, if, um, if somebody wants to post a reply to this video telling me, letting me know um, why my compact flash didn't work, if there's a specific reason, uh, or if indeed a solid state hard drive, an actual solid state drive, uh, 1.8 solid state drive would work, uh, please let me know. I would be more than happy to, um, to get a solid state drive. But I am back in business now. At least my camera is working and I can use it for video. Like I said, I love this camera. Um, I actually borrowed um, because we were taking some, um, we were going uh, to an RC race and I wanted to have a camera that I could take some video with. And I borrowed from my boss, I borrowed a little Canon um, standard, it was digital uh, with a hard drive, uh, but it was a 480p camera. It was not a high def camera. And I tell you what, I've, I've been taking video with this camera for the last three or four years as I mentioned. I forgot how poor quality a 480p camera was. I just couldn't believe it. I mean it was it was horrible. Compared to the video I get with this camera it was just horrible. Um, so I'm glad to have my camera back up. Now I was just in Walmart today looking at some of their new cameras, high def ca cameras, um, and they're about half the size of this. So, you know, I mean, there there are stuff now, and in fact, the video I'm taking with this is using a little keychain 720p hard drive camera or uh, spy camera that I got off of eBay too. So, either way, they're they're smaller and smaller, but I really love this camera. It's it's not too heavy. Uh, I enjoy taking video. It takes beautiful video uh, for me and for what I use it for. So anyways, I hope this has been an uh, educational video for you. Hope you can use it. Um, but anyways, I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.